Guys, we live in the greatest country in the world, the biggest economy, we have the strongest military, and so we have a lot of confidence, we have a lot of safety, and we enjoy a lot of conveniences. Over the past 50 years, America has been strong. Yes, we've had bumps in the road, but overall, it lends to people just living the American dream. You have your job, you go to work, you pay your bills, you go to the movies, you go out to eat, you go to the ball game, you play golf, you have your hobbies and you take your kids out to enjoy sports. There's a lot of things that we enjoy, but today we're gonna to talk about reasons why it's important to be a prepper. Now we're gonna talk about different levels of preparedness, and you have to decide where you fall. Even those that are completely in the white, that really don't see anything coming, they do buy insurance. And so there are levels of preparedness with everyone, or they have a toolbox in their work shed. Now the question is, is being a prepper crazy? Well, there are different levels with prepping. Uh, first off, you have those people, again, that are just living life. They're, they're not paying attention. They're pretty much oblivious. And they think that, you know, things have gone well, things are gonna continue to go well. But there are a lot of issues that have happened, especially over the past few years, that have really changed the mindset of a lot of people. Uh, first off was Y2K, which ended up not being a big deal, but it did put a lot of people on edge because we are very dependent on our computers and on different data that we use and the technology that we have. And to lose that would really be SHTF. And then we had an assault weapons ban uh, and we've had a number of different threats to the Second Amendment. And these are basic freedoms that we enjoy. So it gives a lot of people concerned that our government is really trying to do a lot of overreach. And so that adds to the concern and definitely the assault weapons ban happened and a lot of people lost a lot of freedom during that time but thank goodness it sunsetted out. But then we had 9-11 and that really changed the face of the US and it really put us uh, focused on radical terrorism. Uh, with that, we voted in a lot of laws really to protect ourselves from that that ended up backfiring on us and it did restrict a lot of our own personal freedoms. And then came the pandemic and the pandemic was probably one of the biggest main factors of causing a lot of fear, not only in the US, but in the world in general. And people were making decisions based on fear and honestly, with all the shutdowns and just a lot of people that died, it really caused a lot of turmoil in our country and it affected us economically. And then we had the George Floyd incident, which caused the rise of BLM and Antifa, and there was a lot of civil unrest, a lot of rioting, a lot of peaceful protesting with cities burning. Uh, I think the sad thing about this is we saw that law enforcement was hamstrung and that we really couldn't count on them to protect us. But it definitely changed the face of the way a lot of people look at America. And even today, we're seeing a lot of climate change activists that are disrupting things, and we have the Free Palestine groups that are really doing the same things that Antifa and Black Lives Matter did. One of the problems is, is what's next? And any kind of social injustice that is perceived, uh, we could see more and more of these type riots. While there are idealists in these groups, there's a lot of people that are just opportunists. And honestly, just looking for a cause. And of course, coupled with that is the war in Ukraine and also the war in Israel or in Gaza. And this leads to a lot of fear for a coming potential World War III. So being a prepper is not crazy. Being a prepper is just seeing what's happening in world events and taking measures. And then one thing that I didn't add in is the border crisis. And that has caused a lot of problems on their own, which leads to a lot of people having lack of confidence in our government. So let's talk about the first level of preparedness, and that would be for just your standard natural disasters, uh, whether it's storms, uh, obviously for us, tornadoes, people live in hurricane prone areas, earthquakes, floods, wildfires. I mean, each area has their own particular uh, environmental danger. And guys, typically we have a protocol for that. When something happens, if we have a tornado coming through, we have our safe room, we have all the different things for power outages, all of those kind of things that we're prepared for. And it's the same with each individual area. You guys have your way to be prepared. A lot of people deal with massive blizzards and snowstorms. Here in the South, we don't have to deal with that. But up North, you guys have protocols and tools and things you use to be able to get through those situations. But typically, most of these end up with power outages. So making sure that you have ways to be able to bring power if you need it. 
uh, generators, having solar power, having battery backups. We have a blackout box and it's just this big box with extension cords to go to our generators and flashlights, lanterns, all the things we need, tarps in case there's damage, uh, and it's just great to set those up. But those are things that happen to us on an occasion. Number two is car issues. Uh, you have a kit in your car in case you have some kind of emergency. You have your uh, jack and your, uh, the things you need to be able to keep your car running if you have a flat tire. We have AAA. We have a lot of things that we do to keep ourselves protected while we're on the road. A lot of people put blankets in the back of their car in case they're stranded and it's cold weather. But having a good car kit because we are in our cars a lot and honestly, it's just smart to do. Now, number three is where we start to get more proactive as a prepper. And I call this personal SHTF. And you're in a situation where it's an SHTF, but it's only for you or those just immediately around you. Uh, those can happen at any time. And so for me, my EDC, that is part of my personal SHTF. I keep my knife, my flashlight. Of course, I have my phone and my billfold. I have my concealed carry with me. Those kind of keep me on a base level, but also I have other EDC supplies that I take with me or have locally. Uh, in my vehicle, I have my get home bag and there's a lot of supplies that I have in there in case something goes wrong. Are these life threatening? Typically not. These are things that just happen unexpectedly. So I wanna give you some real world personal examples. I was driving to an event in Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, the rack, the roof rack on my car something came loose and it started to beat against the top of my vehicle. Um, I pulled over, I got out, I got out some paracord and I tied it down and I secured it to the vehicle. Uh, kept going, got to the event. It brought me in on the left. When I was leaving, my GPS told me to go to the right. So I take off down and then all of a sudden I have no GPS. I have no cell service. And so I'm driving along and I don't even know really where I am. And so thank goodness I pull over, I pull out my maps and I get my map out and I figure out where I am and then I'm able to get to the highway from there. Of course, then the battery on my phone started to die. Well, I didn't have my charger with me. So I ended up stopping by the store, which is really convenient and bought me a charger. So there are so many different things that can happen to you on a personal level. Again, is it life threatening? Not necessarily, but it sure makes life a lot easier and it'll save you a lot of time. And yet, if you're a concealed carry holder, that could be something that saves your life. Number four is economic issues. Now this could be because of inflation, it could be the economy, it could be a job loss. And you know, having some money put back in a savings, taking your investments and making sure that they're more secure for a downturn economy. And really thinking this through that there could be some problems and I wanna protect what I have. Uh, for us, obviously gold and silver have been a big part of our precious metals. Also having cash put back. One of the things though, if you have a job loss, is that if you're a prepper and you put food and water and different supplies back, you can take the money that you would put toward food, use your supplies and put that toward your mortgage. Because the problem is, if you default on your mortgage, you're not gonna have a place to put all your food sources. And then once you get a job, you can replace the food. Societal issues or political. And this is where we have protests, we have riots, we have a lot of crime that's happening around us. This has happened a number of times, and so there's a lot of disruption, places can catch on fire, there's riots, people are beaten down in the street, so it causes a lot of issues. And this is something, again, that's happened over and over. And guys, there is more to come. Typically, the people that were in those original protests are protesting something new now. And of course, this is being funded internationally uh, to disrupt our country. So we need to keep cognizant of that. But what is it that we can do if that happens in our area? Well, first thing is just avoidance. Stay away from those areas. If you know something's going on or if something does happen is to get out of the situation. This is a particular problem in a more urban or suburban area where there's a lot of people. Make sure that you're watching for local news, seeing if any kind of protests are happening and just avoid those situations. One incident that we experienced a few years ago was at the NRA in Indianapolis, and we were having dinner, and when we came out, they were having a massive riot out in the street. And it was mainly a bunch of high school kids that were fighting. There were law enforcement everywhere. It was really kind of surreal to watch. But these things can happen whether it's politically motivated or not. And again, you just need to get out of the area if possible. And this leads to just an escalation in crime, which we've seen. Uh, and with defund the police still going on, with police feeling hamstrung, like they really can't do anything. 
Uh, they're there typically as the thin blue line to keep society moving along at a good pace. But when that's removed, things can get crazy. SHTF, it's grid down, it's things have gone to pot, it's a major crisis. Uh, when that happens, you want to have the supplies you need and you want to make sure that you're in good shape. One problem though that a lot of preppers face is that they start the what ifs. And this is what if this happens, what if that happens, and before long, you're just inundated with a lot of stuff. And your financial resources are tapped. Be smart about how you prepare. Guys, you know, I try to be sensible about being prepared, and I can go down that what if trail as well. But try to think of things that are happening around and make sure that you're preparing sensibly for those things. And guys, to be better prepared as a prepper, we have a lot of different videos where we talk about different aspects of prepping. And it's really important to be prepared, uh, whatever level that you decide. Because guys, honestly, the mission of this channel is the better my neighbor's prepared, the better I'm prepared. Guys, when it comes to fire, it is essential to survival. And having a good fire kit and knowing how to use it is vital for survival situations. And Exotac makes the best fire starters on the market. Made in the USA, down in Winder, Georgia. Using really high-grade aluminum, they machine some really beautiful handles, a lot of different features, replaceable ferro rods, and a number of other different fire starting tools. You get 20% off using Suits 20 with the link down below in the description. And a big thank you to Exotac for sponsoring today's video. So be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. We enjoy things that, okay. Now the question is, is being a prepper crazy? Is that what I've, I've already said that? We're gonna talk about five different categories that are happening now. Okay. But number three is where it starts to be where you're getting really proactive. Mosquito. <laughs> Mosquitoes, I hate them. 